do you know why you didn't do the right thing? It's because you really didn't trust God to be God. Did you hear what I just said? When you know the right thing to do and you hesitate or you pause or, 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 you, or you delay doing the right thing at the right time, at the right moment, the truth is that you really don't believe that God is God. Now, I'm not doubting that you believe there is a God, but you're really saying he doesn't have all power. He doesn't have all knowledge, and he's not everywhere. And so most of us really, 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 really don't trust God to be God. We trust him as long as we can see how it's going to work out. All right? So now, let's just see how that worked out in chapter 18. You should have, if you got your book, The Story, raise it up if you got it. If you're sitting next to someone who doesn't, please share with them. Uh, and if you would like to continue with us on this journey, uh, you can pick these up out at the resource on uh, the hub on your way out. Uh, I think they still have them. And we're going to invite you to also join us uh, or doing one of our growth group sessions. You can do so at 11, uh, no, at 930 on Sunday mornings, 12 noon on Wednesday and 6 p.m. on Wednesday evening where we feed the whole family a free meal. And then we start our growth groups at 7 o'clock. And uh, just so come on out as you want, as you want, if you want to continue to grow in the Lord. Now, on last week, uh, what, what did we look at on last week? We looked at the fall of the, of the southern kingdom on last week. Uh, two weeks ago, we looked at the fall of the northern kingdom. So now that Israel no longer exists as a country. Uh, the people of Israel are now in captivity. And we learned on last week uh, uh, that there's some things... What were y'all supposed to do? I gave y'all an assignment, uh, something to remember on last week. Did we not? Uh-oh, I can hear you don't know. What, what was our next step? You're supposed to compare what you see to what God says, right? And choose wisely. You're to compare what you see when you're looking at day-to-day -day living and you see the circumstances, you are supposed to compare what you see uh, to your day-to-day uh, -day life and compare it to God's word and choose wisely. Now, we noticed last week that the king Jehoiakim didn't choose wisely. God told them that if they stayed in Jerusalem, they would die, and if they went into Babylon, they would live. Where they tried to escape out to Egypt, and those who didn't make it, they actually died. God, and then he took Jehoiakim and his sons uh, to Babylon, but he killed, uh, they killed his sons and gouged out his eyes and took him into Babylon. Now, uh, during that time, there were people being exported uh, into Babylon, and this is where we pick up our lesson in chapter 18 today. If you would turn to page uh, 249, uh, and it actually is, if you have your Bibles, that's going to be the first chapter of Daniel. Um, yeah, uh, chapter 18, but when you open up uh, in your Bible to Daniel 1, I think it starts at about the third chapter. Now, the first two verses of Daniel actually is really the uh, uh, tail end of 2 Kings where they take Jehoiakim into Babylon. And I think that's how it states. And it says that God actually allowed it to happen. Look what it says. In the third year of the reign of Jehoiakim, this is in your Bibles now, king of Judah, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came to Jerusalem and besieged it. And the Lord delivered Jehoiakim of Judah into, the, into his hands, along with some of the articles from the temple of God. Then he carried off to the temple of his God in Babylon. Babylon. Babylonian and put in the treasure and put in the treasure house of his God. In other words, one of the things that a, a captive would do when they took over a country, whatever God you worship, they took your articles and placed it in their sanctuary because what they were saying is that our God is the baddest God and our God has captured your God. And look, your God has to worship our God. And so they did this uh, as a way to demoralize people uh, in who they thought their God was. Now, in doing so, a group of Jews went into Babylon and 
uh, they put them in a training camp. And for three years, uh, some young boys by the name of Daniel, Hananiah, uh, Azariah, and Mishael, as I believe their real names. Yeah, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. You know them as Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Now, uh, when you change someone's name, when you change someone's name, you're saying, I own you. And you do as I tell you to do. Now, that can be a good thing and a bad thing. But we'll talk about it as a bad thing. All right? And so this is why they changed their names. Now, they also educated them in Babylonian culture uh, to teach them the ways of the lands, to how to be good Babylonian citizens. Are you listening? And so when you go into a country, uh, if, they, if you're going to be a part of that country, they want you to, you heard the saying, when you're in Rome, all right, so when you're in Babylon, do as the Babylonians do. And so now, uh, what happens here in verse number eight, it says, but Daniel resolved not to eat from the king's table. Now, what happens, well, you see here, Daniel is a young man. He's probably somewhere between 17 and 20 years old. And there's another sidebar here. You don't have to wait to be old to start following the Lord. Uh, it really needs the early you start, the better off you'll be. I, I wish I had started years earlier. I, I could have saved myself some misery and some headache and some, oh, yeah, some whole lot of bad stuff. But I can't back the bus up. So, you know, the good thing about God is not how you start. It's how you finish. And, and, and that's what I love about it is how you finish. And so here now, Daniel decides uh, that he's not going to eat the king's food. And uh, he asked his partners to, to, to covenant with them. And they covenant with them and they challenged the leadership. They challenged the government uh, that they wouldn't eat the government's food. Now, let me just give you another sidebar. And I know there are a lot of Daniel uh, diet plans out there. And people just think that that's the way to lose weight. Well, this isn't about a diet. This is about a covenant relationship with God. All right? I'm not saying that, and I don't think God is a vegetarian. Because he told them in Genesis we could eat meat. All right? And so, so, so what you have to understand the Bible in its totality. Uh, what Daniel was doing, Daniel was saying, you know what? You're controlling every area of my life. But this one area, I'm going to take a stand for my God and for me. All right, and so here he is now. He's going to stand up uh, to Nebuchadnezzar knowing that not only could the guard get killed, but he could as well. But he told the guard, he says, Look, I'm trusting God that what God will allow the food that we eat to do, I'll look just as good as those eating from the king's table. And so the guard allowed that to happen. And so God started working in Nebuchadnezzar's life uh, to the point that he looked at Daniel and his three friends as being 10 times smarter than everybody else. Do you know God will show you favor uh, when you trust him in circumstances that doesn't look like you should trust him? Uh, you can get promotions and you can get raises and all of those things. Don't you know God can see what you're doing and allow folks to look at you in a different light than they look at anybody else? Am I talking to anybody here this morning that needs to understand that God is on your job? Watch this now. Watch this. And so, so these young boys now are integrated into the Babylonian culture. But now, uh, I told you about the Babylonians. They were very heinous people. Now, the king of the Babylonians at this time was a man by the name of Nebuchadnezzar. And we're going to just look at not only he but some of the other kings, uh, how fickle they were, how, uh, how they persecuted uh, the people. And, 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 and just, just, I'm just going to walk through the first five chapters of, of the book of Daniel. And, and this really, I'm going to take you through pages, um, let's see here. I think I'm going to take you from page 249 all the way over uh, to page 258. I'm just going to give you the highlights, okay, because I really want to uh, boil down on when we get to page 258. But Nebuchadnezzar uh, was, uh, how can I say it, uh, unpredictable. Uh, he, he would have tantrums. Uh, Y'all work with anybody like that, uh, that you, you don't know how they're going to be uh, from one day to the next. 
Um, and, and, and in the workplace now, uh, they also had people jockeying for position and power. Uh, you, do you, you ever work with anybody like that that would set you up uh, for the downfall, uh, that, that they would um, try to make you look bad in front of the boss? You, you, anybody ever worked in any kind of environment like that? Yeah. Do you know that stuff? Had, it just didn't start going on. Uh, there have always been people who want uh, to have a one-up on you. And so uh, here they are now um, in working in, in, in this environment. And uh, Nebuchadnezzar uh, built this, uh, uh, had, well, first he had a dream. And uh, he t this is just, just blows my mind. He told them, I'm not going to tell you what the dream is, but you're going to tell me what it is. And, and he says, if, if you tell me what the dream is, oh, man, I'm going to give you a raise. I'm going to double your 401K. You're going to have health insurance. Uh, I'm going to get you that new two-hump camel. Uh, you're going to have... Uh, yeah, all of this stuff. But then he, he, here's, here's the flip side. He says, but if not, I'm going to pull you apart and. Now, you know, I would just stop at the and part. But he says, I'm going to burn your house down and turn it all into rubber. In other words, he said, I'm going to kill off your family. Have you ever been to work and just felt like your boss going to kill off you and your family? Well, yeah, when they, when they take your job away, that pretty much wipes you out, doesn't it? Because, you know, most of us only about a half a paycheck. Not a whole paycheck, a half a paycheck from the curb. All right, and, and so he, he, he threatened them. And so Daniel and his friends uh, came up and said, you know what? Uh, we're going to pray to God. Now, just check this out. They took their prayer life to work. Y'all didn't hear what I just said. They said, you know what, we're going to pray our way out of this. And, and, and they had a prayer meeting all night, and, and they prayed to God, and God showed up and, shot, and showed out, and he went back and told Nebuchadnezzar the dream, and those boys got promoted. They, they moving right on up the corporate ladder. The, the, yeah, don't y'all like those raises? Y'all got promotions here lately, and just moving on up the corporate ladder. But th let me just tell you, new levels mean new devils. Watch this now. Every time you say, Pastor, I got a raise, I, I start praying for you because you don't even know. You just went into higher enemy territory. And, and I'm jumping ahead, so let me just slow down here. And so then uh, after a while, Nebuchadnezzar, you know, uh, after the dream was told to him, it was told that his kingdom wasn't going to last. But he, you know, figured he's going to ride this thing out. And he built a temple, I mean, this a statue of gold 90 feet up into the air and said that everybody had to bow down and worship. Now, why? I got to just show you some things here. Remember I talk about these repeating phrases that you see here? Uh, turn to page, um, let's see here. Go to page 254. And this is chapter 3 in, in the book of Daniel. And you're going to see a phrase, a couple of phrases that just keep repeating themselves. And, and a lot of times we don't look at them happening in today's culture. But look down where it starts after the italics. It says, King Nebuchadnezzar, you see what it said? Made an image. You see that? Of gold. Drop down to the next to the last sentence of that uh, paragraph. Of the, the image of that King Nebuchadnezzar had set up and they stood before it. Now, when he made this image, go down to the next paragraph. It says that everybody, when the music played, when the music played, do, 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 you know, he says, fall down and worship. You see that? Underline that. And then he goes on the next sentence. Whoever does not what? Fall down and worship will immediately be thrown into a blazing furnace. Now, look what happens. The music starts playing and everybody... Now, let me just ask you, let's just be honest. Now, here's one of these situations. All right? You go to work today. Boss says, everybody come on into the conference room. All right? If you don't fall down in worship, you lose your job and all your benefits right now. Just fall down in worship. How many of you are falling down? Don't raise your hand. Don't, 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 don't raise your hand. Uh, yeah. How many of you wouldn't fall down? Don't raise your hand because you, you lied to me right now. You lie to me right now because you're in a safe environment right now. But when you start thinking about, I got the mortgage payment, I got a car payment, I got the daycare payment, I got, I got my hair payment, my shoes payment, called credit card payments. You got all of those. And you, know, and you say now, well, the Lord knows my heart. <laughs> so you bow down. Because you say, what, well, he'll forgive me, right? And, and haven't we ever said that? You know, we can go ahead on and sin and ask the Lord for forgive, forgiveness, right? Now, Paul says over in the sixth chapter, he says we shouldn't do that. But anyway, but we do it. Let's, let's just talk real, don't we? 
We do it. And, and so, so it, look what it says here now. Look, this is just gets me because it says down here, uh, when the music starts, it says, all the nations and people of every language, that means Jews and Gentiles, it said that they fell down and worshiped. So that means those who said that they believe that God is God, they fell down and they worshiped. Except for these three brothers, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He says, you can change my name, but you can't take my God. See, there's some things, all right, that that, that they can't take from you. They can call you what they want to, but that doesn't mean that's who you are. Oh, y'all not listening to me this morning. And they can take some things from you, but they can't take who you are. Now, go on up on page 255. Look what it says now. It says now, some of the guys now on your job, they're going to tell on you. They... Boss didn't know that these boys weren't falling down. They went and said, guess what? You got some guys that work for you. They don't care nothing about you. They don't even fall down. They don't even respect you. They disrespecting you. And so guess what? They got told on, got called into the principal's office. Got called into the boardroom and said, is it true? You got a second chance now. What you going to do? Oh, the Lord knows my heart. You see that fiery furnace burning? You know you will burn. Yeah. Anybody ever cook a steak? That, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's how you, you cook just like a steak. Yes, you will. Now, trust me, some folks must have been in it. Some folks must have tried it and saw that he would what? Throw them in there. All right? And so guess what? These boys said, we're not going to do it. But here's the verse I love. Uh, turn, 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 uh, turn to page 255. When Nebuchadnezzar asked him, he said, is it true? Now, dro- drop on down. Uh, he he, he, he wants to validate. He wants to find out, give him a chance. I know it's just a rumor. You're not going to, I really didn't hear that right, did I? Is it true? Now, drop on down. Shadrach and Meshach Abednego, you see where it says, replied to him, King, we don't have no reason to defend ourselves. Now, here's somebody waiting on the Lord. Didn't y'all just sing, waiting on the Lord? Yeah, to renew your strength, huh? You, he said, I have no, we have no reason uh, to defend ourselves. He said, you know what? We going to trust God. And here's the part that I love. Even if God does show up, have you ever trust God? Even he can say to God, I'm going to trust you even if you don't show up. Can I talk plain? See, we can read these stories because we know the outcome. You know these boys, when they were standing at the fire front, they didn't know if God's going to show up. See, they, they had an opportunity here. They could have said, well, you know what? The Lord knows my heart. I, I can just say, I can bow down and I can go on back home and tell the family. Now, I bow down, but I ain't mean it. I just wanted to keep my job. Are y'all listening to me? They said... The God we serve is able. See, sometimes you just need to know that God is able. Say, say God is able. Oh, you know, you do, do you believe that God is able? But even if he doesn't, we want you to know. See, now what they're saying is we want to be a witness for our God. Sometimes we don't want to be a witness for we got secret agents. Y'all good right now. Y'all good witnesses right now. Y'all love the Lord right now. Y'all are praising him up in here right now. But get on that job come tomorrow morning and the boss calls you. Somebody going to get tested as early as in the morning. Hmm. Let me slow down and speed up at the same time. Because uh, what am I saying? See, one minute you're going to be a hero at work. And the next minute you're going to be a zero. Can you handle it? Uh, when, 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 how they see you, you're up here. But when they take you, they bring you down here. Sometimes we, we, we value ourselves on how others see who we are. But you got to value yourself on how God sees who you are. And, and when you realize that who you are in God, then you can say, you know what? For God I live and for... Oh, you're doing good right now. You're doing good right now. Uh, So so, so walk on over here now. And so these boys didn't bow down. And and then you get on over to chapter 5, and then you have Belshazzar, his his son, and and he saw the writing on the wall. That's really happening, the writing on the wall. And Daniel had to come and deliver him and tell him what was happening on the wall. So you had all this persecution going on. But what what was Daniel and these boys doing? God desires. Here's your life point here. Here's your life advice. God desires godly living in an ungodly world. God desires godly living uh, even in an ungodly world. 
the world isn't going to always be your friend. In fact, uh, if you're a friend of God, you're an enemy to the world. We, sometimes we live our Christian lives thinking that everything's going to be all right. Let me slow down here. Um, yeah, so, so, so now, so now we, I'm, I'm getting to where I want to spend a little time this morning. Uh, now we're at chapter 6 in, in, in your Bibles, and we get to the opening chapter, chapter 6. Now, by the time we get way over here, remember I started, I said Daniel was somewhere between 17 and 20 years old. But by the time you get over to chapter 6, Daniel is somewhere in his upper 80s. Brother should have retired. In fact, he was retired, and they called him out of retirement. And now the kingdom has changed from the Babylonians to the Medes and the Persians. There's a young man sitting on the throne by the name of Darius, and he's been watching this old man work against these young boys, and he loves his work ethics, and he loves his knowledge and his wisdom. He's thinking now. He called the cabinet meeting and said, you know what? This old man, Daniel, I'm thinking about raising him up above the whole kingdom. He says, I can't find anybody who's got wisdom like that. Do you know unbelievers hate it when us when believers get ready to get promoted to be over them they get fearful they get they they don't they don't they don't want you in that position and here now this man who doesn't know God but heard about God is gonna trust a man who knows God here he is now uh, in his mid-80s should be long retired and 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 so this is a life lessons for some of y'all who think it's time to sit down Uh uh-oh we won't stay there long. Now, 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 flip on over. So here now, the boy has a work crisis. He's doing a good job at work, and folks don't like it. That ever happened to anybody? Folks don't like you doing a good job. You're making me look bad. <laughs> you, 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 ought to, you ought to pull back some. You, you got some folks that just busting their butt, giving, them, giving it all they got. Why? Because they're working unto the Lord. So here he is now doing a great job, and, and folks are calling up. You know how they had that parking lot meeting? That email meeting? Look, look, look at Daniel. Oh, he's making brownie points with Darius. You know they're getting ready to give him a raise. You know that's my job. I should be getting that job. That's not his job. He an old man. He don't know what he's doing. Are oh, y'all listening to this? This is modern day stuff, right? So they work up a coup. They call a meeting with the king. Now, the king now, uh, look at the predicament he puts himself in. The king, they appeal to his ego because they say, king, why don't you set up a decree? Because we all agree. Now, see, that's a lie right there because it said that they all agree, which means he's, they're implying that Daniel is going along with this. All right. And so he said, we all agree that you ought to set up uh, uh, this, this, this image and we ought to worship nobody but you for the next 30 days. You're going to be God. How many like to be God for 30 days? Boy, huh, come on. Just, how about you know if you could be God for just an hour. You get everything straight you needed. Would you not? Yes, you would. Yes, you would. You would. Now, you might mess up, but you think you, you, you'd take care of some stuff, wouldn't you? Some of y'all wouldn't be here because the folks, if they were God for an hour, they'd get rid of you just like that. You'd be gone. You'd be out of here. You know, I ain't like them no way. You know if you could be God for an hour. Yeah, you, you, no, you packing. That's why you don't care. <laughs> predicament now. He doesn't even see it coming. Uh, see, you got to be careful when folks are appealing to you and pumping you up, trying to make you feel all good, you see. He, he, he didn't have the discernment to see what was going on. And so in doing so, they set him up and he writes this decree and say, everybody going to worship me for 30 days. For 30 days, you're going to just worship me. And now, if you don't, now, we're not going to do the fiery furnace thing. We want to see you. We want to hear you scream and holler from lions eat you up. Anybody ever been in a lion's den? We don't even like them at the zoo, do we? You back up when they go, you, you back up at the zoo. Now, these are not, these, these not, these, these not zoo lions. No, these are lions. They don't feed a lot. So when they want to feed them, they're ready to eat at all times. All right? And he's saying now, if you don't bow down uh, and worship me, guess what? Uh, you're going to get thrown into the lion's den. These boys follow Daniel home. Brother at his house. Now, you can't even, you know, folks follow you home looking at what you're doing. They, 
They up to the church again and again and again. Boss said, y'all ain't supposed to go to church for 30 days. Some of y'all will be all right with that. <laughs> Pastor, we ain't got to come for 30 days. Our boss said, we ain't got to come for 30 days. Daniel goes home and pray. Now watch this. So how many of y'all think they took prayer out of school? Yeah, you, you know they did. No, they didn't. They just talk, took out who could pray for you. That's not a bad thing. You don't want everybody praying for you anyway. You can pray for yourself. They didn't take prayer out of school. See, y'all thought they did, didn't you? They don't took prayer out of school. We can't even pray at school no more. You can pray anytime you want to. So here's Daniel. Daniel goes home and he prays. And they tell on Daniel. And they come back and say, King, didn't you say? Look, the setup working now. Didn't you say? And the king said, yes, I did. He said, well, guess what? Your boy Daniel, that one you're thinking about promoting, give him my job. You know we love you better than he loves you. He praying right now. The text said, now this is where it gets really good. This is the predicament. Look what it says now. They say he pays no attention to you. Look what it says. I'm at the bottom of page 258. Then they said to, king, to the king, Daniel, who is one of those exiles from Judah, see, they call him out his name now, pays no attention to you, your majesty, or to the decree you put what? In writing. He still prays three times a day. When the king heard this, he was greatly distressed. He's troubled now. The brother spent all day and all night trying to figure a way how to release him, calling cabinet meetings, writing new edicts, new laws and everything. But God said, no, we, I'm going to show you something here. And see, God, see when God's working, could Dan, Daniel could have taken the easy way out, couldn't he? Oh, God knows my heart. I don't have to pray for three days in the open. I can just go in my prayer closet. Nobody will ever know. Do we do that to God? Yeah. Yeah, we do. This is the predicament the king is in. The man he really highly respects, respect his God more than he respects his boss. Hmm. No matter what law he made, Daniel understood what Jesus would say a thousand years later. Render unto Caesar what is Caesar and unto God. See, y'all didn't even want to say that loud. Under God. Ah. So Daniel gets tossed into the lion's den. Here's a, here's, a, here's a news flash. Here's some life advice. God doesn't always take you out of your lion's den. All right? But he's always in it with you. You need to know that. God doesn't always deliver you but he's always in your deliverance. See, we sometimes in our Christian walk always want God to exempt us from life circumstances. But if you really trust the Lord, the Lord is saying, walk with me, trust me, know that I know the way that you should go. I said, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He leads me into the path of righteousness for his name. Say, yea, though I walk, through the valley. Some of you have valley experiences, but you got to walk with the Lord. You can't run from him. He didn't say you ran through the valley. He didn't say you stopped in the valley. He didn't say you turned around and went the other way. He said that you walk with him. When, when, when you know that you don't know, but you know who you know. He's saying, walk with me. He said, are you going to trust me now? He says, I know it looks bad, and I know that the lions are hungry, Daniel. What are you going to do when the lions are hungry and they're sitting there waiting to devour you? What you going to do? What you going to do? Are you going to trust them right now? See, every time we say, well, the Lord knows my heart, you're saying, Lord, I don't believe you can close the mouths of these lions. These boys look mighty hungry. I seen the last group. I see the heads. I see the bones. I, I see the remains of those who were just in there before me. What are you going to do? He's something years old, 50 years old, 30 years old, doesn't matter. What are you going to do?
Not only is Daniel, not only is the king in a predicament, Daniel is as well. But Daniel didn't even flinch. He doesn't know the outcome either. The top of the next page says, the stone was brought in place over the mouth of the den, and the king sealed it with his own signet. That's like his death certificate. Boom. Said that the king didn't sleep all night long. He got up early that next morning, ran to the lion's den and hollered out, Daniel, Daniel. Now my question is, why would this king even call out to a man that he know ought to be dead? Are y'all not listening to me, you see? He went to a tomb looking for a dead man. Oh, but when he got there, Daniel said, I'm alive. Why are you looking for the dead? Of the living among the dead. <sighs> Let me slow down and hurry up at the same time. So now the king has witnessed the great work of God. The king said, How could we fix it? Some things you can't fix. Some things the king had to do. He said he wrestled all night long. You know what he said? He was waiting. On the Lord said, Lord, I did all that I could do. I tried to change every law. I tried to negotiate with everybody I could, but I couldn't deliver. And God said, there's some things. You just got to wait. You just got to wait that only God, only God can deliver you out of. Some of you, you've been waiting a long time for some things, but you just need to wait. Keep walking with the Lord. Keep talking with the Lord. And maybe you'll be able to make the pronouncement that you see King Darius make. If you drop down to the bottom of page 259, I think it starts there and flips on over. It says, I issue a decree that in all parts, uh, in every part of my kingdom, people will fear and reverence the God of Daniel. He is the living God, and he endures forever. His kingdom will not be destroyed. His dominion will will do what? Will do what? Will never end. For he rescues it. Isn't that what it says? He saves. Isn't that what it says next, I believe? What, go ahead on it. Believe it says, yeah, he's rescues. He says he performs signs and wonders in the heavens and on the earth. He rescued Daniel from the power of the lions. Now, I really wish we could say that Darius was a saved man here. But he, he wasn't, and that's a whole other story. But he recognized some things. And, and let me just give you a little sidebar. You can't legislate loving God. He was trying to make loving God a law. And he said that they must fear and revere the Lord. But God is looking for us to love us on his own. And he recognized, look at, look at his description of the king. He says that he's a living God. In other words, Darius said, there's some other gods out there, but this God is the living God. There's some other gods out there that their dominion will end. He says, but his will endure forever. Ah, look, look, at, look at the dependability of, of this king. He says, his kingdom will never be destroyed. It's durable. You're talking to a God that has a kingdom that's durable. Can never be destroyed. Ah, and his dominion will never end. He's talking about a God that can take care of you, your children, your children's children, your children's 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 children. He's talking about a God that will reign forever and forever and forever. Oh, somebody ought to praise him right now to know that you got a God uh, that can be there day in and day out, that you got a God that can do anything but fail. There's no lion's den, there's no fiery furnace. There's nothing that can separate you from the love which is in Christ Jesus, not life, not death, not angels, not demons, not things present, not things future, not no power, nor anything in all of creation can separate you from the love that is in Christ Jesus. You ought to be thankful right now that if you just wait, 
If you just wait, if you just wait on the Lord, he will show up and he will show out. The key thing God wants you to know, the bottom line, God says if you honor him, he'll honor you. Will you honor him? With your day-to-day life? What is it that you think he can't help you with? Is your marriage in trouble? You've been trying to fix it on your own? Honor him. Your finances aren't working well? Have you ever honored God with your finances? Oh, Pastor, I, I, when I get myself straight, I'm going to start giving. No, you can't get yourself straight. You trust him first with your resources. It's not what he wants from you. It's what he wants for you. But if he knows you don't trust him, why should he act? What about your children? Are you going to put them in his care? What about your career? Do you try to make your boss happy before you make God happy? God says honor him. That means if you honor him, he's first. No excuses. None. None. That's the challenge for you. Just look at your life and see, have you really trusted God when times were trying, when you didn't see how things were going to work out? Will your faith stand the test of time? Will you trust him? My question is, what do you have to lose? Nobody who's ever trusted God has ever been sorry that they did. Show me your hands if you ever trusted God and you're sorry that you did. You sorry that you trusted God? Anybody's been sorry that they trusted God? How many have been glad that you trusted him? How many of you know that you know Come on, don't, don't lie to me. Now, how, do, how many of you know that you get to serve a God? How many of you know that he's a God that sits high and looks slow? How many of you know that he's a God that can pick you up and carry you when you can't even walk by yourself? How many of you know? How many of you been there crying all night long only to see God working in your favor? How many of you know that when you went to the doctor, he had already worked it out? How many have you know? How many do you know? If you would, please stand on your feet.